Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ Blessed. My name is Captain Joel, and this is Officer Mishael. All right, so today is a continuation of the Persian and Mede captivity in the African diaspora in the sub Indian subcontinent. But this today's portion is going to is going to focus on the Northern Kingdom migration into India. I'll say it again. So this portion is going to focus on the Northern Kingdom migration into India. So we're going to pick up from the last place we left off that, and that was with the book Light and Truth. Can you pull that up? This is the present state of Judah and Israel. The Hebrews or Israelites, the Jews. He shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah, the black Jews of Cochin in the East Indies, Dr. Buchanan gives an account of. The Most High speaks of gathering his ancient people from the East and from the West. Dr. Buchanan informs us that the black Jews have a tradition that they arrived in the East Indies not long after the Babylonish captivity. And he adds, what seems to countenance this tradition is they have copies of those books of the Old Testament which were written before the captivity. But none of those dates, none of those whose dates are subsequent to that event. It seems most probable then that these black Jews are descendants of the Jews who turned their course to that region of the East when they were liberated from Babylon instead of returning to Jerusalem. Some of the Jews manifestly did so thus. remember, we just went over <clears throat> the Persian and Mede captivity in which King Cyrus liberated the Jews and gave them an option. You could either return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, or you could do what you, you could stay within the lands in which you lived in. Or some of the Jews, as we know, or the northern kingdom of Israel migrated to Ashtoreth, or what is called America today, the Western Hemisphere. Some Jews, which you're going to find out, migrated to India, or the Indian subcontinent, <coughs> or Southeast Asia. All right? Read on. Some of the Jews manifestly did thus part from their brethren and migrate to the east. These were the Jews who abounded in the eastern as well as the western provinces of Persia in the days of Ahasuerus, Haman, Esther, and Mordecai, when the impious decree was obtained against them by Haman. So it says, East, when they were liberated from Babylon instead of returning to Jerusalem, some of the Jews manifestly did thus part from their brethren and migrate to the East. These were the Jews were abounded in the Eastern as well as the Western provinces of Persia in the day of Ahasuerus, Haman, Esther, and Mordecai, around 483 B.C., before Christ. So the Jews of Koshin or Corella or the Madagascar coast, which I'm um, not a Madagascar or the, um, I forgot the coast of it. What you're going to realize, what you're going to find out, these Jews descended during the time of Esther. Okay, let's go to Zechariah chapter 8, verse 7. The Malabar coast. That's it, the Malabar coast. Let's get to the Bible. Because are the Israelites, we read scriptures that the, the Israelite diaspora, that Israel was scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So in order to be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, meaning not only do they live in the Americas, North, Central, and South Americas, or even Africa we have entered into the sub-Saharan, as well as the transatlantic slave trade, and which descendants or Jewish colonies that were established during the trans-Saharan slave trade, during the Mohammedan conquest, well, also, some of those Jews went to India, the, or the Indian Ocean slave trade, and that's not talked about in history. But we're going to go to the Eastern Hemisphere. Zechariah 8, verse 7. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the East Country. So the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I will save my people from from the east country, read. And from the west country. And from the west country. Pull up the map. It says, behold, I will save my people from the east country as well as the west country. So geographically speaking, people might say, oh, what is the east country and the west country making reference to? Is it making reference to east to Jerusalem or west to Jerusalem? No. You have to understand the diaspora and the prophecies pertaining to the scattering of the 12 tribes of Israel. 
If you look historically, during the transatlantic slave trade, you see the slave ships going where? Everywhere. To the east as well as the west is making reference to what? The western hemisphere as well as the eastern hemisphere. So we've been touching the diaspora, the scatter of the Israelites, based upon the prophecies based in Deuteronomy 28 of the western hemisphere. We understand that. We understand that a black Hispanics and Native American Indian, without a shadow of a doubt, are the children of Israel. That's right. Based upon archaeological um, artifacts, geographical locations, historical books, references that we brought out in previous classes, that can, and irrefutable information that they cannot can be contended with. So we, we touch base with the transatlantic slave trade, the ships going to the Americas. Going to North America, South America, Central America, Mexico, or the North American Indians suffering oppression or, su or being subjugated into corners, or what do you call as um, what do they call the reservations? Now we're going to the Eastern Hemisphere. Not only Africa or Europe, we touched the Israelites there, but we have never touched the Asian subcontinent or the Indian subcontinent, or the Indian Ocean slave trade. And what scholars very rarely speak about, why? Because it doesn't pertain to them. It pertains to Elam, if you've been paying attention, or the East Indians, the Iranians, the slave trade. So in order to define, or in order to know the history, you got to go to the other side of the world. Caucasians are not going to have the records of the books, but the East Indians are going to have the records of the books, as well as the Iranians are going to have the records of the books. So now we're going to bring out those records in its entirety. So God says, read that again. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country. The, the eastern hemisphere? Read. And from the west And country. the western hemisphere. Is that it? Nope. All right. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. It's time to open up our eyes to the other side of the world. Isaiah 11, verse 11. Good. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. So it's going to come to pass. That guy, now Isaiah is prophetically speaking about the Israelites that were left behind. The Israelites that did not partake in the African diaspora or the Biafra, going to the Western Hemisphere. But the Israelites that resided on the Eastern Hemisphere. But it shall come to pass, meaning a future event, a prophetic event is going to occur. Read. That the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. So there's a remnant of his people on the Eastern Hemisphere. Read. Which shall be left. From Assyria. Which shall be left in Assyria, modern day Kurdistan, read. And from Egypt. And from Egypt, which is in northeast Africa, read. And from Pathros. And Pathros, Egypt, read. And from Cush. And Cush, Ethiopia. There's Israelites located in Ethiopia to this day, read. And from Elam. And from Elam. Elam consisted of India, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, and in different regions within, that, and within um, the Indus region valley. And from Elam, there's Israelites in the Indian subcontinent. Read. And from Shinar. And from Shinar, Babylon, or modern-day Iraq. All right? Is that it? And from Hamath. And from Hamath. And from the islands of the sea. <laughs> Or from the islands of the sea. You have the Madagascar coast. You have the Sekilis Islands and the Indian Ocean. Ocean. All right? So let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 5. This is the book of Acts. Chapter 2, verse 5. Make sure you pay attention and you take notes. Because not all Israel. And now, I want you guys to be mindful. Because we tend to base our nationality, our identity, our culture on colorism. Meaning all black people are Israelites. All the descendants are colored. Yes, at one point we all 
were of dark pigmentation or melanated skin color. But throughout history, throughout, assimil- throughout history, throughout the various captivities, Israel assimilated amongst the different nations, the nations in which we were held captive. We assimilated, we adopted a culture, and not only that, we adopted a facial features. So just like you have blacks on this side of the world, you also have Latinos. Now, the Latinos and Native American Indians make up of the uh, Northern Kingdom. So we see the, the features of the, North, the Latinos, right? Who do the Latinos look like? They look like the Spaniards, which conquered them. North American Indian. A lot of them look like, or the Medes, the Persians, the Molins. They took on, take on different features. So if we go to the other side of the world, what are they going to look at? That's why it's not a color thing, but it's a Bible thing. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And a stranger would not follow. All right? Acts chapter 2. This is the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, meaning men that kept the laws, out of every nation under heaven. Read. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Now let's jump to verse 9. Acts chapter 2, verse 9. Parthians. So, the Jews dwelling out of every nation under heaven, Jews came from Parthian, which is um, in the Persian Empire, the Persian region. Read. And Medes. And the Medes, Iran. Read. And Elamites. And Elamites. There's Jews that came from the Indus region valley. How did they get there? There's Jews that were dwelling in Elam, Iranian, Iran, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Iran, you have India, or the Indus region valley, Elam. So Jews were dwelling out of every nation under heaven. So historically, biblically speaking, we know that Israelites are within the East Hemisphere in the Indian subcontinent. All right? That's all I want on that. Now, can we get the map in the ocean? Just to show you a visual of the various regions in which the Jews came from on the Indian subcontinent, based upon what we just read. All right. So you have India. Okay. Minimize it. Okay. You see? So Parthia, you have Medes. And Elamites. So, can you get the cursor and go where it says Iran, Pakistan, India? So, from Iran, now move over, go to Pakistan, and go to India. So, Jews inhabited that whole region, or the Indus region valley, or the Indian subcontinent. All right? Now, let's go to the book. Let's go to the downtrodden of India, page 62. So, now, historically speaking, a lot of um, people living on the Indian subcontinent, or they will, call, they will say that two race, specific races inhabit both North Indian as well as South India. You have, and which the vast majority of people within the Indian subcontinent say they descended from. Either one of these two um, races. You have one group which is called the Aryan race, and another group called the Dravidian race. So either if you live in North India, the vast majority of the Indians live in there, or even in America. You see the Indians live in America. Those Indians are descendants from North India, or they'll claim descent from the Aryan race. Or you have in South India, the vast majority live in the southern part of the Indian region, say they are descent from the Dravidian race. So by those two races, ethnical groups divide the Indian subcontinent between North India, which is the Aryans, and South India, which is the Dravidians. All right, can you pull that up? The fourth and largest group that inhabited ancient India was the Dravidian. You see, the fourth and largest group. Now, there's many different groups that inhabited ancient India. 
not only the Dravidians, but the vast majority of people that inhabit India it consists of the Dravidian race as well as the Aryan race. So we're just dealing with these two ethnic groups. Read it again. The fourth and largest group that inhabited ancient India was the Dravidian. Go on. Most scholars agree that the Dravidians came into India from the eastern Mediterranean in the third millennium B.C. Mm -hmm. By 1400 B.C., the Dravidian civilization in India extended across the entire land. So the Dravidians now, prior to the Aryans, now we're going to get to the Aryans next. So the, that's what, and you, you're, you're saying the Aryans, that sounds familiar. The Aryan race? in which white people call themselves under the regime of Hitler. Mm -hmm. They call themselves Aryans, mean the pure ones. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something about Esau. Esau takes and devours, and they, and they take, claim, take hold of titles that has nothing to do with them. The Aryan people was of the Indo-Iranian race that has nothing to do with Caucasians. They just adopted the term Aryan to mean the pure ones or the noble ones of the upper class or upper caste system. And that's why Hitler and the German race, Germanic race, adopted the Aryan terminology. All right? So, so the Dravidians, when they migrated into the Indian subcontinent, they extended across the entire land. So they, they uh, occupied both North India as well as South India. All right? Now, jump down. To an Aryan. Mm-hmm. The Indo-Aryans in the second millennium B.C. migrated from their homeland of Aran Veg, the present Russian Turkestan, via Afghanistan into India. So it says the Indo-Aryans in the second millennium B.C. migrated from their homeland in Aran Veg, the present Russia, Tur Turkestan, via Afghanistan into India. Can we pull up a map? So to show you the location the geographical location in which the Indo-Aryans migrated. So they migrated afterward. All right. So so this whole area, which is highlighted, correct? Yes, sir. So that's the Arenvej, or modern-day Russia, or even what's that? Um, so that's the location, Arenvej, in which they migrated to, right next to Iran, Armenia, or the Caucasus Mountain, Russia, around that whole region. That's where they came from. All right? The Indo-Aryans in the second millennium B.C. migrated from their homeland of Eden Veg, the, re the present Russian Turkestan, via Afghanistan into India. Thus, the Aryans moved eastwards, fighting the indigenous Dravidians whom they exterminated or enslaved. I want you to keep that in mind. I want you to keep in mind the Aryan race, which they migrated from Eden Veg into India, remember, the Dravidians inhabited all the entire Indian subcontinent. So you have the Aryans came, migrated, and they went to war. They won the war. They exterminated a good amount, a good portion of them, and enslaved the Dravidians. I'll say it again. They enslaved the Dravidians. Mm. Keep that in mind. All right? It's going to play a key point. Now, let's go to the next book. Yeah, I thought there was more. Yeah, okay, read on. They overran the open country, stormed the fortified towns, per, uh -huh. of, the Indus, of the Indus Valley, and slowly migrated eastwards, conquering the whole of northern India. Wait, in, a val in this valley, and slowly migrated eastwards, conquering the whole of northern India, read. Around 1400 to 1000 B.C. Around 1400 to 1000 B.C. B, C. Now, let's go down. Go down with a lot point. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Loud uh, point. Loud point to the fact that the native black Dravidians were largely exterminated by the light-colored Aryan invaders. Mm -hmm. Their Purim, meaning fort or town, civilization was destroyed, and those who were not killed were made slaves. Again, those who were not killed amongst the Dravidians were made slaves. So you have the Aryans inhabited North India. They conquered the Dravidians, enslaved them, and inhabited North India. And the Dravidians migrated or were, went down to South India or the southern part of India. Keep that in mind. 
I read that. When the Aryans began to spread eastward and southward from Punjab, they spread too thin. Therefore, the policy of total annihilation of the Dacius was found unnecessary as well as impossible. Instead, the Dravidians were made domestic and village slaves. All right. So that's all one of that. Okay, now let's go to the encyclopedia. Foundation of movement. The origin of the Dravidian people lies in question, but it is generally accepted. But it is generally accepted fact that they are not indigenous to the subcontinent. Why? Because they migrated into the Indian subcontinent. We just read that. Read. It has been suggested that they are the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. Hmm. Why do they say they're the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel? They're saying that now. Dravidians and Aryans are of Iranian race. But why are they saying the Dravidians are descendants of the lost tribes of Israel? Keep that in mind. All right, I want you to hold that thought. Read. That they came to the area of South India through migration. That they came to the area of South India through migration. Read. By sea from North Africa and West Asia. From North Africa and West Asia. Now jump down to the basic Dravidian. The basic Dravidian racial type is Proto-Mediterranean, which the Tamilian evidencing Arminoid characteristics suggesting an origin in the Iranian plateau. So they're saying, it's suggesting the basic Dravidian racial type is Proto-Mediterranean, with the Tamilian evidence Arminoid characteristics suggesting an origin in the Iranian plateau. So it's showing you that not only does the Dravidians as well as the Aryans, both of them come from that Iranian area or the Persia, where the Persia Empire was established, or Elam, or Susa, that whole region, that whole Indus region where you have the Persia Empire, Parthia, you have Iran, you have Susa, you have Elam, all that whole region, the Dravidians as well as the Aryans came from. The difference is the Dravidian Aryans, those, those are two social classes. The Aryans were the upper class or upper, upper class people, and then you have the Dravidians of the lower social class. That's what you're going to. But keep in mind, they says they think they are the lost tribes of Israel. But here, they say they come from the origins, it's from the Iranian plateau. Now, let's go down to civilization. As the Aryans came into India, beginning about 2000 BC, the Dravidians... So now, don't mind the dates. The dates are all, are all approximately. It's all approximates because they can't really pinpoint exactly. Read. The Dravidians moved south, mixing with the dark proto-Australioid... So, so there's other racial groups. That's why it says four categorization of racial groups in the Indian subcontinent. So the Dravidians... Moved south, mixing with the dark proto australoid That's why when you go to India, they had different racial feature, features. All right, go down. Keep reading. Oh, the uh, proto australoid peoples whose evidence a human antiquity in India dates back to about 500,000 years. That, you see, that's why I said don't mind the dates. Esau throws out random dates as if it's <laughs> as people's around recording in the year 500,000 BC. Right. You know, we migrated. No, that's what it says. Don't be too, like I said, we're going to stay with the, t the biblical timeline. And that's how we're going to know what dates are what and what t captivity were these migrations committed. Go on. They exist today as the tribal people of South India. Mm -hmm. As the Aryans expanded to the south beginning about 1000 BC, mm -hmm. racial and cultural assimilation between the Aryan and the Dravidian followed. So after a period of time, they start to assimilate racially and culturally. So that's why when you go to India, the features are all over the place. You really can't tell too much who's of what class. But you do, if you do notice, you can tell the difference between the light, their lighter skinned Indians that you see on TV and there's darker skinned Indians that they very ever really show. Just like when you go to South America, they show the lighter skins, and then they show the yep. dark. They don't show the dark skins. It's the same concept, just on a different side of the world. There's a different facial feature you're looking at. So, but the ones you see on TV 
are more than likely are the north north side of India or northern India or the Ar- Iranian or Aryan race or Aryan descent, but still descendants from Elam. Okay, now let's go to Lost Tribes and a Myth, page 341-343. So I want you to keep in mind, the, the Aryans defeated, went to war, migrated from Aranjev, migrated into the Indian subcontinent, went through the Indus region valley, conquered the Dravidians, enslaved the Dravidians. But one book says they would perceive that the origins of the Dravidians has descent from the 12 tribes of Israel. Why is that? Are they incorporated the 12 tribes of Israel within their descent? But on the other hand, they say they descended from the Iranian plateau in which Elon inhabited. Hmm. You have to know the history. We, that's why we went over the Persian and Medo captivity. If you weren't following, then you're going to be confused. If you were not following, you're going to be confused. If you are following, they say, oh, okay, this makes sense. This is why they say the 12 tribes were a part of the Dravidian people. All right? It should be observed that various students of Indian history reached the same general conclusion. Mr. C.M. Wish notices the tradition already cited from Arthur that certain Malabar Jews claim that their ancestry reached India in 69 AD. So certain Malabar Jews claim that their ancestry reached India in 69 AD. Read. 17 years after Thomas did. 17 years after Thomas reached India. Keep Thomas in mind. Mm -hmm. Keep Thomas, Apostle Thomas. So these Jews... Malabar Jews reached in India in 69 AD, 17 years after Thomas did. Hmm. Keep this in mind. Now jump down. One tradition among Cochin Jews is that 10,000 Jews came to India after the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus. So, it says one tradition among Cochin Jews... So now, we have a historical account by the Jews of Malabar saying that they reached India 17 years after the Apostle Thomas in 69 AD. Now, you have another account of the Koshin Jews. So you have the Jews of Malabar. You also have the Jews of Koshin. One tradition among Koshin Jews is that 10,000 Jews came to India after the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus. That's 70 AD. So one form, the Malabar Jews arrived in India 69 A.D. The Koshin Jews arrived in India approximately around 70 A.D. Okay? Now, go to the next page. <laughs> 342. The black Jew settlement at Kranganore had formerly a population of 80,000, but had then shrunk to 4,000. They claim to date from Nebuchadnezzar's time. So you have the black Jew settlement at Kranganore. Claimed descent during the time period of Nebuchadnezzar. So that's around five, what is it? 606 BC. Or after I'll say the um after Cyrus gave us liberty during that whole time period. You have says shrunk to thousand. They claim the to date from Nebuchadnezzar's time. So between the Babylonian captivity and the Persian captivity. The Cranknor Jews. So now, can we pull up the map? So we have three sects of Jews within the subcontinent of India. You have the Malabar Jews, the Koshin Jews, and the Jews of Cranknor. So it says the, the coast de Malabar. So Malabar was a sea coast. So can you point now to Cranknor? So the Cranknor Jews. Now let's go to Koshin. The Koshin Jews. We were all amongst each other. The Jews, as we migrated, we formed towns within a Malabar sea coast. So we have Jews of Malabar. We have Jews of Kosha, as well as Jews of Kraganor. Kosha, the modern um, city of Kosha, is Koshi. All right? So the modern day, so Koshi today. So Israel, we were living all amongst the sea coast. Okay, now, let's go to page 343. Now remember, they said that the Dravidians were of the 12 tribes. 
Were they? This is page 343. And also remember, the Dravidians inhabited South India. Go on. They claim that a part of the tribe of Manasseh was placed by Nebuchadnezzar in the eastern part of his domain. Keep hold of that tribe. They claim that Nebuchadnezzar, they said, sorry, they claim that a part of the tribe of Manasseh, northern kingdom, was placed by Nebuchadnezzar in the eastern part of his domain. Read on. And that 200,000 Jews later traveled thence to India. 200,000 Jews later traveled thence to India. What tribe are we speaking about? Northern kingdom. M Manasseh. Read. Spending three years in the migration. Spending three years in the migration to go to India. Northern kingdom. Manasseh. Now go down. The Dutch Admiral John Splinter Stavorinus, in his voyages in the East Indies, 1774 to 70, 1778, has the same tradition, a little more accurately stated. Captives who escaped from Shalmaneser spent three years. Wait, wait. Captives that escaped from Shalmaneser, remember, 2nd Ezra chapter 13, read. During the Assyrian captivity, read. Spent three years in reaching India. So these captives, during the time period of the Assyrian captivity, around 900, what is it, 702 or 700 AD, right? 722. 722 AD, BC. BC, yes. Since captives who escaped from seminars are spent three years in reaching India, read. Which, mean, which again means that some Sargonid colonists in the cities of the Medes came with the Persians into India. Mm -hmm. Keep going. The number 200,000 probably means that Jewish colonies in northwest India once had that strength. Captain Hamilton has the same story with the notion that Nebuchadnezzar's empire reached to Cape Comorin. Mm -hmm. Thurston finds a... No let, let me tell you, black people didn't write this. They wrote book. These books are dated back into the 17 and 1800s. So this is a historical account of their journeys that they documented uh, what the people in, in which they encountered. And when they, as they encountered, these people told the story of their ancestry. So yeah, listen, this is the story of my ancestors and how we migrated to this portion of India. So these are historical accounts. This is not from. This is not anything that we just made up. And guess what? This is for on the other side of the world. Go on. Thurston finds another black Jew tradition that their ancestors were not. <laughs> another black Jew tradition. Oh, listen, man. If you don't know the Jews are black by now, I don't know, man. I don't know how to help you anymore. You need therapy. You need white man's therapy. You need to sit on the couch and just talk about your life. You got to talk about it. Go on. Thurston finds another black Jew tradition that their ancestors were not of the original Kranganor colony. So they said another black Jew tradition is that their ancestor was not of the original Kranganor colony of the Malabar coast. Read. And were driven out of Palestine 13 years before the destruction of Solomon's temple. <laughs> that's before the Babylonian, that's the, during the time period. Uh, yeah, that's before the Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. Go on. This specifically connects with Nebuchadnezzar's raids. Mm -hmm. It would mean that two years before the deportation of the Yekinya colony <laughs> in 597 AD, 2 Kings 24, verses 11 to 16, the oppressive Jehoiakim drove, drove some to go by the sea route to India. Biblical accounts of our father, the oppressive regime of Jehoiakim, driven some Israelites to go to the sea, by the sea route to India. Damn. Come on now. Now, let's go down. Certain Cochin Jews, not counting the Persians as oppressors, claim that their ancestors came under... Now, it says certain Cochin Jews, not counting the Persians as oppressors. Why? Because of Cyrus. Because of Darius. Because of the liberty which was given to it, because of Ahasuerus. That's why I didn't count the ancestors. If you were with us and read the previous classes, uh, was with us taking notes of the previous classes during the Persian meat captivity, 
there were certain liberties that was given to us under the Persians. And the Persians was one of the least oppressive captivities that gave Israel liberties. Read on. Claim that their ancestors came under Persian protection. See? Yo, that's, yo even, I, that, that's how you know the Bible's a true book. These are historical accounts of our ancestors taught on the on Indian, uh, the Malabar coast, of the ancestors during the Persian captivity. Of what? Of the, the, of the liberty that was given and the protection that was given for the Persian. So you cannot say that the Bible's not true. We have historical accounts of them documenting uh, the existence of Esther, the existence of Ahasuerus, the Persian kings. Mm. I have a book that goes in, they used to call Esther the sweet lily or sweet rose. Amongst those inhabitants of Israel, they call Esther a sweet lily and a sweet rose. You know, Esther used to bathe in oil. That's probably it, too. They probably <laughs> smelled like that. Mm, that girl smelled good. Susanna of her time. Mm -hmm. She was a Susanna of her time. She was a bad <laughs> mama. All right. Go on. Claim that their ancestors came under Persian protection at the time of the Esther episode. They knew of Esther. They, Esther was a real historical figure. Right. You can't deny the, the Bible. Read. And that they had converted many Hindus long before any white Jews arrived. Hmm. Oh, we gonna get into those white Jews. We gonna get into those white Jews of kosher. Alright, is there anything else of that? Let's see. That's it. So, key points I want you to keep in mind. Remember, they said the Dravidians were of the ten tribes of Israel, or the twelve tribes of Israel, or the lost tribes of Israel. Now, we're getting clarity that there's a migration. Now, remember, the Dravidians lived in what? South India. And they were enslaved as well. They assimilated with the Aryans, as well as the Australoids. Or Austro um, what is it? The Austro I think it said Australoids or something Austro like that. Australoids, yeah. Yeah. So, now you've seen a migration from different time periods of Northern Kingdom. Now, I forgot a scripture. Let's go Luke 21, verse 20. So, it says... That some, during 69 AD, you had the Kraganoids, the, I think it's the Jews of Malabar. And then so another historical account, they says after the destruction of Titus, the Kosan Jews migrated into India. Let's get the Bible. Why did they migrate into India during 69 AD and 70, and during the, the destruction of Titus? And is that scriptural? Is that biblical? Luke 21, verse 20. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then so when, Christ, who's speaking? Jesus Christ. When you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. What armies? The Roman armies. Under the, gener under the lead of Titus and Vespasian. Roman emperors during that time period. They compassed Jerusalem, seized it, and overthrew it. So Christ prophetically was warning the Israelites, when you see Jerusalem compassed by the Roman armies and le being led by the Roman generals Titus and Vespasian, read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Then let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains. Oh, you thought they only fled to what? Africa. That was one portion of the Israelites. One, one subgroup fled into Africa, Egypt, Tunisia. You have Guinea and migrated downwards. Some of them lived in Libya, Cyrene. Mm -hmm. And they went to the west coast of Africa, the Gold Coast, or Negro land. Yoruba. You have Ghana today. You have Waida. So all on that west coast of Africa, Israel fled. We migrated deeper into Africa as time went by. But... Now, you have the other side of Luke 21. The prophecy concerning the seeds of Jerusalem. Some went to Africa. Some went to India during the destruction of the temple. Go on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Mm -hmm. For these be the days of vengeance. Read. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. All things written in Deuteronomy 28, the curses, the siege of Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem, the exile of the real Jews out of the land. Read. 
But woe unto them that are with child, uh -huh. and to them that give suck in those days. Why? Because the women started to eat their children because of the siege. They cut off our food supply. They cut off our water supply. So that our women started to eat their children for survival's sake. Read. For there shall be great distress in the land, mm -hmm. and wrath upon this people. Mm -hmm. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And we fell by the edge of the Romans, by Titus and Vespasian. Read. And shall be led away captive. And we were led away captive to what? Into all nations. The Jews are in all nations. The Jews are in America, North and South America, Central America. The Jews are in Europe. The Jews are in Africa. The Jews are in Asia, India, Iraq, Iran. Pakistan, Tajikistan. The Jews are in India. The Jews are also in China and Japan. Go on. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. You mean you have Gentile nations who inhabit our land. You have people, so-called Jews, call themselves Jews, which are Israeli or Edomite descent or Amalekite descent. You have some of them that call themselves, you have some of them that call themselves, um, um, okay, some of them from the Khazardian Empire, or whatever you want to call them, whatever they call themselves. They're not the true Jews of the Bible. That's you have right. some Palestinians claiming descent from the Jews. No, not Palestinians, I'm bugging. So you have pal some Palestinians inhabiting our land. All right? Now, let's go to the next book. A translation. Apostle Thomas. Now, also keep in mind, Apostle Thomas. We read that. Some of the Kragenor Jews that revived 17 years after Apostle Thomas. So they know the history that Thomas touched down in India. Thomas touched down in India. Why? Hmm. Acts 2 verse 5. And there was devout Jews, devout men. Dwelling out of every nation under heaven. Parthian, Medes, Elam. Hmm. Apostle Thomas was in India. Dr. Claudius Buchanan. Dr. Claudius Buchanan of the Church of England in 1806 to 1808. See, listen, this is when this is before our time period. This is during the time period of slavery. We didn't have access to these records. So these are Edomites and, Elam Edomites and Elamites exchanging information amongst each other. Go on. Visited the Christians of St. Thomas in India and also the Israelites who dwell near them. Wait, wait. Dr. Claudius Buchanan of the Church of England in 1806 to 1808 visited the Christians of St. Thomas in India and also the Israelites who dwelt near them. Go on. He found that the Israelites are divided into two classes called the Jerusalem or white Jews. Called the Jerusalem or white Jews. Hmm, go on. And the ancient or black Jews. Wait, 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 wait. Or the ancient <laughs> or the black Jews. They're associating <laughs> the ancients with the black Jews. That's right. Showing that they know that the ancients are the black Jews. They didn't just have no association with the ancient with the white Jews. Nope. Go on. I'm going to show you Thomas. Thomas is not stupid. I'm going to show you. Go on. He saw and conversed with some of both classes. The white Jews. Wait, wait. Read that again. He saw and conversed with some of both classes. So Apostle Thomas saw and conversed with both classes. Read. The white Jews delivered to him a narrative in the Hebrew language of their arrival in India. Sorry, it's speaking to um, Dr. Buchanan. Go on. The white Jews delivered to him a narrative in the Hebrew language of their arrival in India. Go on. It stated that their fathers, dreading the conqueror's wrath, departed from Jerusalem, a numerous body of men, women, priests, and Levites, and came into this land after the second temple was destroyed, mm -hmm. which took place A.D. 70. Mm -hmm. This narrative states that other Hebrews afterwards joined them from Judea, Spain, and other places. Oh, no, no. Now, check, no, keep in mind what's going to happen. Go on, read on. He says of the black Jews. Now, we just spoke about the white Jews and their migration into India. Now, he, he says of the black Jews, read. 
It is only necessary to look at their countenance to be satisfied that their ancestors must have arrived in India many ages before the white Jews. It is only necessary to look at their countenance to be satisfied that their ancestors must have arrived in India many ages before. Why are they saying that? <laughs> because the ancient Jews were black. That just by looking at their countenance, they said, wait a minute. We know that they arrived before the white Jews. We know these are the original inhabitants. Go on. The white Jews looked upon the black Jews as an inferior race. As they always do. As they always do. Go on. And as not of a pure caste, mm -hmm. which plainly demonstrates that they do not spring from a common stock in India. Go on. They the don't spring from a common stock in India. We are not of the same ethnic group. Read. The black Jews recounted the names of many other small colonies of the ancient Israelites. Wait a minute. Now you notice how Dr. Buchanan is specifying amongst the black Jews. Now the, the white Jews said, oh yeah, during, um, that was very vague. Oh yeah, after 70 AD, we migrated to India because of the oppressive regime. <laughs> you notice how when the black Jews, anytime they gave a historical account um, about their migration, they went into death by about the rulership, the empire, and the time period. They always went in depth, based on biblical death. Oh, no, we came during the Persian captivity, during Esther, when the Persian regime gave us liberty to go into India. Oh, no, we came during the time period of Jahakim, ja ja when when um, he pushed us into the seacoast of India. Oh, no, 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 we came during Titus and Vespasian's um, the, um, conquering of Jerusalem. No, we came during Nebuchadnezzar's time period. No, we came during Samanassar's time period. It all, all has historical account, biblical accounts. But when it came to the white Jews, oh, yeah, we came to 70 AD during the press of regime. Very vague. But of the black Jews, read. The black Jews recounted the names of many other small colonies. The black Jews recounted many other small, the names of small colonies, read. Of the ancient Israelites. You notice how the word the black Jews, it, t it always says the ancient Israelites. Everybody know the black Jews are the ancient are the original Jews. That's right. Read. Resident in northern India, uh -huh. Tartary, and China. Ah, uh -huh. that's another topic. Go on. And gave me a written list of 65 places. Yo, we were so specific in a death. We said, yo, we can give you a list of all the places where they live. Where are the white Jews? Because they, they're not the damn Jews. They're liars. <laughs> they're just like when we, we're able to go in depth into our history, we're able to go through maps, bring our historical records. We're able to go to the Bible, show you pro prophecies. When it comes to white people that claim to be Jews, we are the Jews. We are the Abrahamic descent. What information? What historical information did they give? They just give you we're the Jews and that's it. The same thing that they're doing back then. Same thing they're doing today. They have no historical records. They have no maps. They just say we are the Jews, and you take it for face value. Go on. I knew you, Hootie. I ain't, what you say, what you, I ain't Yehudi. <laughs> I conversed with those who had lately visited many of these stations. Dr. Buchanan seems to have regarded the black Jews as part of the Ten Tribes. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Dr. Buchanan had what? Seems to have regarded the black Jews as part of the wait, Ten wh Tribes. Why didn't he regard the white Jews? Why? He said he regarded the black Jews a part of what? As part of the ten tribes. The black Jews as part of the ten tribes. The black Jews a part of the ten tribes. Read on. Those to whom the apostle Thomas preached. Wait a minute. Those to who? who? Whom the apostle Thomas preached must have been settled there before his arrival. Before? But... Apostle <laughs> Thomas preached to who? The ten tribes. And they were there before his settlement. Apostle Thomas went, Thomas went to India to what? To converse and to teach Christ to the lost tribes of the northern kingdom in India. That's why Christ says, go therefore in all nations and teach and preach, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? No, that. <laughs> that's what white people say. Go therefore, that's what Christians say, right? Yeah. Go therefore in all nations and teach. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, right. and the Holy Spirit. Right. Hallelujah. That means everybody. Right. No, 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 no. That's not the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that. 
Go ye therefore in all nations and teach who? Israel. 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 Why? Because the Israelites of the northern kingdom were scattered in India as well. So Apostle Thomas taught the black Jews of the ten tribes of Israel. Go on. Those to whom the Apostle Thomas preached must have been settled there before his arrival, mm -hmm. which probably was many years before the destruction of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. A.D. 70, mm -hmm. and the arrival of the white Jews. Before the arrival of the white Jews. Read on. So that there is a strong probability that those to whom he preached were a migratory part of the ten tribes. Wait, so why did, wait, do you notice Thomas didn't teach the white Jews? <laughs> they weren't his people. But he taught the black Jews of the ten tribes. It says, those to whom the apostle Thomas preached must have been settled there before his arrival, which probably was many years after the destruction of Jerusalem, A.D. 70, and arrival of the white Jews. Go on. So that there's a strong probability that those to whom he preached were a migratory part of the ten tribes. Go on. Dr. Buchanan says... I inquired concerning their brethren, the ten tribes. He inquired concerning their brethren, the ten tribes. Now, let's go to the next record. The apostle St. Thomas landed on the Malabar coast at Kodangalore, Kranganore. Wait a minute. So the apostle Thomas landed where? On the Malabar coast. Wait a minute. Why the Malabar coast did he land specifically? Apostle Thomas knew exactly where to go. Remember the historical counts? The Jews were of the Malabar coast, where they lived, a Kraganor, as well as the Kosin Jews. The apostles, just like during Paul's ministry, he went where? Greece, Ephesus, Asia Minor. And he always went to where the synagogues were set up, where, or wherever the Jews dwelt. So Apostle Thomas didn't just go to any random location. He specifically went to Malabar coast of the Kondegalor, or which is Kranganor. Go on. That seven churches, or more correctly, centers of Christianity. Apostle Thomas set up seven churches. We're going to get into that. Go on. Now go down, go down, go down. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, pick up the Malabar Christian. The Malabar Christian tradition of the arrival of St. Thomas in their country is upheld by Colonel Yule, Cafe, and the Way Thither, Volume 1, page 75, note. After quoting the different names, Kranganor had born at different periods. In the apostolic age, it was known as Muziris, he says. Kranganor is the seat of one of the old Malabar principalities mm -hmm. and famous in the early traditions of both Jews and Christians on that coast. Mm -hmm. It was there that, according to the former, the black Jews of the tribe of Manasseh. Wait, 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 wait. Read that again. It was there that, according to the former. It was there that, according to the former, read. The black Jews. The black Jews, read. Of the tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh. What did we read that earlier? We read that in um, the lost tribes of myths. That, let's go back to that. They claim that a part of the tribe of Manasseh was placed by Nebuchadnezzar in the eastern part of his domain, and that 200,000 Jews later traveled thence to India, spending three years in the migration. They claim that a part of the tribe of Manasseh migrated to India. Now go back. Why did Apostle Thomas go to India, the Malabar coast? Who was in the Malabar coast? Who was he teaching? Go ahead. The Malabar Christian tradition of the arrival of St. Thomas in their country is upheld by Colonel Yule, Cathay and the Way Thither, Volume 1, page 75, note. After quoting the different names, Kranganor had born at different periods. In the apostolic age, it was known as Musiris. He says, Kranganor is the seat of one of the old Malabar principalities and famous in the early traditions of both Jews and Christians on that coast. It was there that, according to the former, 
the black Jews of the tribe of Manasseh. Because a Manasseh during the time period of Nebuchadnezzar in between the Persian captivity migrated to there. They migrated to India. Now we know where Manasseh specifically migrated. Northern Kingdom migrated specifically. The Malabar Coast, Kranganor, Kosha. And guess who went after them? Thomas. He knew exactly. When Christ said, go therefore and teach all nations, he knew exactly where to go in India. Mm. He knew exactly the location. How? How did he know that? Why did he go there specifically? Because Northern Kingdom was there, settling there. Go on. It was there that, according to the former, the black Jews of the tribe of Vanessa first settled and abode for more than 1,000 years. <laughs> Go ahead. It was there. The black Jews of Manessa settled more than 1,000 years. During the time of the period of the Syrians, the Babylonians, all throughout captivities, there was a migration into India, different time periods. Jews was constantly migrating during the Indus region valley. Go on. It was there that St. Thomas is said to have first preached on the shores of India. And there also the Mohammedans were first allowed to settle and build a mosque. Now, let's go to next book. We're going we're gonna to go through this quickly. Go on. Chapter 13, the Jews and the Phoenicians in Madagascar. The Jews and the Phoenicians in Madagascar. Can we get a map real quick on Madagascar? You probably heard that on the news. The Madagascar um, president with the COVID, we had a natural COVID um, remedy. Mm -hmm. So Madagascar is just off of the coast of Africa within the Indian Ocean. Go, br bring up the map again. Isaiah chapter 11, one more time. Bring up the map. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam mm -hmm. and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Those are the islands of the sea. Madagascar is the island of the sea. Reunion is the island of the sea. Rodriguez, Moritius, yeah, Moritius. Those are islands of the sea in which the Israelites live. That's what the prophecy is going into. Now, now go back to it. I have above suggested that the fleets of Hir Hir Hiram and Solomon must have been partly manned by Jews. The fleets of Hiram and Solomon must have been partly manned by Jews. Go on. It seems impossible otherwise to account for the numerous early Jewish as well as other Semitic rites and usages still everywhere prevalent in Madagascar. So there's still Jewish customs that's prevalent amongst the Madagascarians. Go on. Of course, we all know that after the destruction of Jerusalem by Titus in 70 AD, there was a general dispersion of the Jews, many of whom took refuge in various parts of Arabia and especially in Yemen. You only know about Africa. But Jews went the other side as well. They went into Arabia and especially in Yemen. Go on. Where they even founded some petty states whose rulers, Assad Abu Karib, Du Noas, and others are still remembered. Now, let's go to page 151. It's page 151. Just some customs that the Jews were keeping along the Indian Ocean. Go on. The Israelites were thus, before even the advent of the Phoenicians, mm -hmm. brought down to Men Menuthias, the great island of Madagascar, where, like the Himyarites, they have left undying memories of their presence, mm -hmm. as we shall now, as we shall now see. The later Jews referred to at the opening of this chapter had long discontinued such primitive and anthropomorphic practices as those associated. For instance, with the scapegoat of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 10. Mm -hmm. that so now we go into some of the customs, the Levitical practices that we were keeping on the island of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. Read. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord. 
to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And verse 22, and the goat shall, and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Now it is precisely these ancient ritualistic observances that we find surviving in Madagascar. So we were still doing those ancient um, ritualistic observances in Madagascar with the goat, letting the goat for Day of Atonement. Go on. <clears throat> the goat, not being indigenous, is replaced by the ox. And the late James Cameron, to whom I am indebted for several of the following incidents, mentions the case of a man doomed by his destiny. Right, that's it. So that's it. Now go down. What is this? The same notion. The same notion of vicarious sacrifice, common enough amongst the hovas of Imarina. Amongst the hovas of Imarina. Keep that in, I want you to keep that in mind. Hovas. Where do you think hova comes from? Hovas. <laughs> Jehovah. That's right. Jehovah. The hova Jews. Jehovah. Can we get a picture real quick, an introduction of the, the hovas, of those that call themselves hovas? And you see how they take in the Amalekite um, traditions. Yeah. Amalek, what, this is what Amalek does. Amalek knows that he doesn't really have a hold of our people in the Western Hemisphere because of that, that fight within us, Judah, because of the pro prophecies concerning Judah. They know that they couldn't really get Judah to the extent in terms of Christianity got us over in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> and you, a lot of Amalekite traditions are found in the Eastern Hemisphere. A lot of the Jews... Or the remnants of Jews within Africa, or as well as India, or throughout the India subcontinent, are practicing so-called Jewish or Jude Jewish customs or Judaism because of what Amalek does is they say, okay, before because of the prophecy, before the ten, twelve tribes awake, let's go over there and indoctrinate them before even because they know they have traces of the ancestors, mm -hmm. the lineage. They have more information than of the American blacks have over here in America. Because why? The plot, Esau's plot was to keep the American blacks completely, completely clueless to their identity because of the prophecy. When Judah wakes up, then Judah brings, the prophecy is for Judah to bring everybody back into the cultural identity. So you have remnants of Israel within different locations that kept hold on to the Jewish traditions or have recollection of who they were. But Amalek, what Amalek does, they come in and they indoctrinate them. So, oh, yeah, you guys are Jews. Let me teach you my Jewish customs. Right, exactly. That's what they do. And they make it harder for us. But it's not really going to make it too hard because once we come in with the spirit, they're going to say, okay, let me follow you now. The real Jews are here. <laughs> now, let's go on. Come on, that don't look like us. Go on. Next, another picture. Yeah. Look at my, my that looked like my man over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right, go go there. A beautiful black sisters. Look at that. Look at that. Come on now. Come on. Come on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. Now let's go back to the book, one page 153. Amongst the ancient Hebrews, provision was made for the detection and punishment of offenses against the law by the ordeal of the bitter waters of jealousy. The spirit of this ordeal survived till recently amongst the Hovas, who applied it to all suspected cases. It still apply the law of jealousy with bitter water <laughs> <laughs> to this day. <laughs> Now go down. Bull and calf worship, common amongst the Israelites and other Semites, also prevailed amongst the Hovas. Now you know that bull and calf worship, you know what kingdom they are of. What kingdom do you think? <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Northern kingdom. Freaking Northern kingdom. <laughs> 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 what happened to that bird? <laughs> 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 Yo, so it said bull and calf worship. Common amongst the Israelites and other Semites also prevailed amongst the Hovas. Go on. Who made images of bulls, which were brought 
which were bought in in the markets and set up for adoration all over the country. Remember, remember, you you know why they kept hold of that tradition? Because when they migrated to Madagascar, guess who just guess who, guess what happened? Prior to that, the kingdom was split. Jeroboam was worshiping what? Nice. What was he worshiping? The calf. Where? And in Samaria and in Dan. Mm -hmm. Calf worship. They migrated during that time period into India and kept the tradition of worshiping the calf. That's what's happening. They kept the same traditions that Jeroboam taught them. These be your gods, O Israel. These be your gods, O Israel. <laughs> Go to page 154. <laughs> Among the Jews, the new year was ushered in by the feast of the Passover. Wait, wait, wait. Read that again. Amongst the Jews, what? Among the Jews, the new year. Listen, those of you celebrate New Year's on January 1st, you got it wrong, brother. Bring it out. It says, among the Jews, the new year was what? Was ushered in by the feast of the Passover. Was ushered in by the feast of the Passover in the springtime. Go on. So also among the Hovas, the new year begins by a general feast mm -hmm. in which there are certain analogies with the Passover and some other Jewish feasts. Same customs being kept. All right, let's go on now. Let's go to page 156. So amongst the Malagasy people, there was an old custom which was strictly analogous to the offering of incense to the Queen of Heaven amongst the Canaanites. Who does that sound like again? <laughs> <Who's> that? <laughs> no, the kingdom again. <laughs> Jeremiah 44. <laughs> Jeremiah 44. Right. We will burn incense to the queen of heaven. Mm -hmm. Let's get that real quick. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 15. Then all men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, mm -hmm. and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwell in the land of Egypt in Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven. They were doing the Malagasy's or the Jehovah's were burning incense to the queen of heaven as well. Why? They took hold. They brought to Madagascar their idolatrous customs, such as the worship of the golden calf. Now, it was intermixed with Hebrew customs, but pagan customs as well, <laughs> as Jeroboam taught the northern kingdom. So they mixed paganism with God's customs, with our heritage, our biblical customs. So that's why, in one instance, they're worshiping the golden calves. In another instance, they're keeping a Passover, the new year. In another instance... They're keeping a Levitical law with the goats. Then another instance, the worship of the queen of heaven. So they're going back and forth, flip-flopping, <laughs> as they always have. Go on. And to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. <laughs> Go on. For then had we plenty of victuals. That's it, that's it. Don't worry about the block. All right. All right. Go on. Now, now go back to this. Go back. No, I thought you were going to say something because uh, they, no, no. they did say the cities of Judah. But... You got hatred amongst you, bro. You got hatred <laughs> in your heart, brother. We're speaking about Northern King. We're not talking about Judah right now. You want the scripture. I understand where Christ come from. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know why I went to that scripture anymore. <laughs> brother been waiting for that all day. He said, Judah! <laughs> go on. <laughs> So, so amongst the Malagasy people, there was an old custom which was strictly analogous to the offering of incense to the Queen of Heaven amongst the Canaanites. The new year opened with a new moon. Wait, the new year opened with a what? A new moon. A new moon. <laughs> Go on. When was kept the great feast of Fenderoma, Fenderona, Fenderoana. Come on, huh? Which is now, I understand, <laughs> observed at the full moon. Wait, the new year was observed at the what? At the full moon. They were keeping the new moon as the full moon back then. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's our people on Madagascar, the Hovas. Dang. Listen, they were keeping the ancient feast. They were keeping it the right way. 
But well, you know, no other king though mixed with <laughs> paganism. So they were keeping the new year or the pass the new year around the Passover. They said, but now this clears it up. This page clears it up. It says the new year on the new moon, mm-hmm. which is the full moon. That's right. <laughs> all right, that's all I went on that. Now, where are we? Okay, let's get to the next book. I like that too. Becoming two, Jewish. Two successive evenings. I like that too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, go back. Yeah, go back to that. So it showed you right from yeah, the yeah, evening. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Go on. It says this new moon was anxiously awaited and ushered in by much burning of inflammable materials on two successive evenings. Two successive evening from evening to evening. That's right. <laughs> That's where the day starts. That's when we issue it in the new moon. On the full moon. Now, let's go back now. The Bene Ephraim. The community of Bene Ephraim was established in the late 1980s in the village of Kotharedi Palem of Guntur district of coastal Andhra Pradesh by a group of Christianized Madiga Dalits, uh-huh. untouchables. They call themselves the Bene Ephraims. Let's see. A Christianized Madiga Dalits, untouchables. Who what? Who, like the Bene Menashe. Wait, didn't we read earlier that Manessa came into India and was taught by Apostle Thomas? Go on. Declared that they belong to the lost tribes of Israel. Wait, so they're declaring the the Christianized Madiga Dalits, the untouchables, Mm -hmm. declare, they call themselves Ben Ephraim, correct? And one group calls themselves Ben Manessa. They declare that they belong to the lost tribes of Israel. Why are they declaring that? In India. Mm. Go on. Now jump down to in 2002. Oh, Lord. In 2002, Shemuel Yacobi published a book entitled The Cultural Hermeneutics, Mm -hmm. offering an account of the history of the community. Of their community. So, yes, Shemuel Yacobi. Can you bring him up? Okay, I believe that's him. Yeah, that would look like a Shemuel Yacobi. <laughs> that's my brother right there with the smooth mustache. Some of you Judas can't even grow a beard. You should be ashamed of yourself. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's go back. Dang. <laughs> go on, in 2002. In 2002, Shemuel Yacobi. Delivered, I mean, published a book entitled The Cultural Hermeneutics, Hermeneutics offering an account of the history of the community. Uh-huh. Which, he says, I'm going to give you an account of the history of the community called the Bene Ephraim. Go on. Which may be summarized as follows mm-hmm. The Bene Ephraim descended from the tribes of Israel. He said, Us, the Bene Ephraim, descended from the tribes of Israel who in 722 BCE were exiled from the ancient kingdom of Israel by the Assyrians. He's given a historical account of his people being exiled in 722 AD by the Assyrians. Wait a minute. Why is he giving a historical account on northern kingdoms? Because why? A northern kingdom was exiled out of the land in 722 AD. Mm-hmm. Why is he not get a historical account of Judah being exiled out of the land in, um, in 538 no, 606 B.C. Go on. After their sojourn in Persia. Wait. After their sojourn in Persia, we read that, read. They moved to the northern part of the subcontinent. Didn't we not read that earlier? That in the first book, there, these Jews spoke about they came during the time period of Koshen or Kragenau. They came during the time period of Esther, Mordecai, Haman. He's giving a historical account of his community. How they ended up in India. Go on. Which was then populated by <laughs> Dravidian groups. Wait a minute. They move to, that's why I say keep in mind. What well, I'd say to keep in mind from the beginning of class, that the Dravidians yep. were of descendant of the ten tribes, of, of the lost tribes of Israel. So that the what? Read that again. Uh, after their sojourn in Persia, they moved to the northern part of the subcontinent. After the sojourn in Persia during his Persian captivity. So this is this his sect of ancestors. Read. Which was then they pop- moved. 
Oh. They moved? They moved to the northern part of the subcontinent. They moved to the northern part of the subcontinent. Ephraim migrated to the northern part of India. Go on. Which was then populated by Dravidian groups. They were the, it was then populated by the Dravidian groups. This is before the Aryans came through. Remember what happened after the Aryans came through? They got enslaved. They went to war and they enslaved them. Mm -hmm. And guess what happened? They assimilated amongst them afterwards. Go on. In the 7th century BCE, mm -hmm. the subcontinent was conquered by the Aryans. Ah, that's what we read earlier. The subcontinent was conquered by the Aryans. Go on. Who established the caste system. The Aryans established the caste system, the social and political <laughs> caste system. So just like in America, you have the variation of caste systems. You have the upper class, you have the middle caste class, or you have the poor class. We consist of mainly, primarily, of the middle class as well as the poor class, but mainly of the poor class. Right. So this caste system established in each country. So India has four established caste systems. So the Aryans, when they migrated from Agrev all the way to the Indian subcontinent, when they went to war with the Dravidians, they also went to war with Ephraim. And they established, they enslaved them and established a caste system. They subjugated them to a life of poverty, oppression, and caste system. Go on. Who established the caste system and relegated the Dravidians and the Bene Ephraim to the positions of Shudras and the untouchables, respectively. They relegated them to the position of Shudras and the untouchables, respectively. We're going to go into that. Not today, but next week. Because we're going to today. We're going to be here to 1, 2 o'clock. <laughs> I want to keep my brother here. You know, he... Go on. <laughs> Go on. Say something slick. No, no, I help him. <laughs> <laughs> Both groups were later moved to the south of India. Wait a minute. Both groups were later moved to the. You notice everywhere you go, the Israelites are always moved south. to the south. Yep. Everywhere you go, south in Italy. Everywhere you go, down south. Yep. Yep, up north, down south. Give me some other examples. I'm trying to think of uh, southern Italy. Southern Spain, wherever you go. So we migrated because the, the Aryans conquered us, and they moved us down to South India with the Dravidians. Go on. Where they now reside. Read on. The current state of affairs in the community is explained as an unfortunate result of the further, adv advent, the further advance of Aryan rule under which the Bene Ephraim lost their status and political significance. The Bene Ephraim lost their status and their political significance. Go on. Were reduced to poverty. They were reduced to poverty. Go on. And left with very few means of maintaining their tradition, indeed almost forgot it. They forgot who they are. They don't even know who they are anymore. They were relegated into South India and subjugated under the caste system, the four caste system. And guess what? Not even a four caste system because there's four caste system. And guess what? Ephraim is outcast. They're outside of the caste system. They're not even considered a people. Just like the American blacks in America is considered three-fifths of the man under the American Constitution. Mm. In India, the establishment of the four caste system, which we're going to go over next week, they're not even considered a caste. They're relegated as the sudras, which are slaves, the worst of the worst of the class. Insignificant, subjugated to poverty, oppression, where they don't even know who they are to this day. Go on. Uh, the Yaakov, uh, you want to? Yep, the, keep uh, going. The Yaakobis maintained that their parents and grandparents had been aware of their Israelite origin. They, the Yaakov, they understand they were aware of the Israelite origins. They, through tradition, oral tradition, they pass it on to their kids. Because what you're going to realize, the American slave trade was one of the most atrocious slave trades in human existence. Mm -hmm. Where a group of people was subjugated into, in the worst conditions where not only were they subjugated into poverty, but their heritage, their nationality, their social class, everything about them was taken away from them. 
They were lost. Their nationality was changed. Their identity, they were wiped clean. Their last names. So America was one of the most atrocious slave trade in the world class history. So back then, that's why we haven't retained anything. But over there, there's little remnants of information that escape through time. So that's why it says the Jacobis maintained that their parents and grandparents had what? Had been aware of their Israelite origin mm -hmm. and had practiced Judaism in secret for a long time. And they practiced Judaism in secret. Were we doing that in Spain? We was practicing in secret our customs. Under Spanish Inquisition, go on. The Judaization of the Bene Ephraim has been dismissed by some commentators as an attempt by a former untouchable community to change its members' position in the local hierarchy. they saying that the reason... This, you see how they always do that? They say, oh, no, you're not descendants. They said the reason why you claim um, heritage to um, the Benai Ephraim is because you're trying to change your social status right. amongst the community right. so that you can get better position or get aid, foreign aid from Israel. That's what they're saying. That's the, that's, you're saying that's the only reason why you claim um, heritage. Go on. Or to improve their material circumstances by moving to the state of Israel. You see, they're saying they're thinking that's a political ploy, plot. Go on. But the Yaakobi stress that their low caste status had nothing to do with the emergence of the Bene Ephraim. It has nothing to, our low caste status has nothing to do with the emergence of the Bene Ephraim. Go on. At the same time, Shmel Yaakobi explains that this research and activism towards finding the Israelite connection were partially driven by observing his fellow members' exploitation at the hands of higher castes. He started doing what we all do. He started yeah. searching because he said, yo, something going on. Right. There's an issue amongst my community and the, and the conditions in, in which we're placed in. So he started searching his history. That's heavy. Observing the conditions of his people that are subjugated to a state of oppression and slavery. So he says, there's a missing connection. And that's how he came across the history that his, answer, that his grandparents practiced, that they knew of. So he went further into research. And that's going to um, segue into next week's class. And next week's class is going to go into the untouchabilities or the Dalits of Tamil today. <laughs> All right? The northern kingdom of Israel in India. All right, so today we went to the northern kingdom migration into India. Next week we're going to the modernized northern kingdom and who they are today by name, the facial features, the history, as well as the curses in which they're subjugated under Deuteronomy 28. All right, so with that, we're going to say shalom. Until next time. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth